Ahoy! Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another armor jet video. This time, rather than covering something as specific as a weapon or a loadout, I strapped on a jetpack, joined the Fiery Tail armor jet team, and rocketed out of the moon base onto the blood-stained frag floor. After several hours of being reduced to meaty giblets over and over and over and over again, I have returned to give you aspiring pilots my top 5 tips for surviving in space. Essentially, a beginner's guide to keeping your insides in. Before we begin, as a special bonus point. Zero. Make a Superbit ID. Whatever platform you're playing on, sign up for a Superbit ID. It's free, it attaches to your email, and it protects your progress, and allows you to log in from other devices. Armorjet is cross-platform, and this Superbit ID will allow you to take your profile from Android to iOS to Steam and all the way back round again. More importantly, if you have to delete the game, or if your device is damaged or lost and you need to reinstall, you won't lose all your progress. Seriously, go set it up right now. I'll wait. See, I'm being serious. Do it now. All right, done? Good, then let's go. Number one, stay alive and mobile. Well, yeah, this probably sounds like the most obvious tip ever. Every time you die in Team Deathmatch, the opposing team earns a point, and dying in Fuel Frenzy causes you to drop any fuel canisters that your team so stupidly entrusted to an idiot like you. So, dying lots not only makes you look like a useless blood-filled meat sack, but it'll also cost your team the game 9 times out of 10. But that's not the point I'm trying to make here, stick with me. When pilots first start out, many play hyper-aggressively and rack up a whole ton of kills. But, being the bloodstained with the most kills doesn't really mean much if you're on the losing team. Just means that you were the best loser. Top stuff, bet your parents are proud of that title. Focus on your flight suit's mobility, learn to hang on the edges of your opponent's range and to engage only when beneficial to you and your team. Use cover to your advantage, whether that's the arena or your teammates. You have a jetpack, so stop being a ground-hugging idiot. Use it to pop in and out of safety and to retreat when you need to. Keep moving. Keep airborne. That said, don't burn your boost unnecessarily. There's a little worse than getting caught in a bad situation and having no fuel to escape. Yeah, that's one of the fastest ways to go from pilot to puree. Sure, the aim of the game is to kill the opposing team most of the time, but try to do so whilst having the fewest deaths. You'll be amazed at how this improves your gameplay. Focus on working that KDA into as favourable a ratio as it can be. Number 2. Carry a variety of weaponry. If you're watching my Loadout Lowdown series of videos, you'll know by now that some arenas punish or reward certain weaponry. With its claustrophobic corridors, snow base can be tricky to get good snipes with the long claw, for example, but the weapon excels on the open expanses of Temple. Now, whilst you do get to vote on your next map, there is no guarantee that you won't be outvoted or even that your favourite map will be an option. As such, you're going to need to pack for every occasion. You've been given three loadout slots, so use them. A one-trick pony is the first to be made into lunch meat. Don't be a one-trick pony, dumbass. Personally, I tend to have three different main weapons for the loadouts. Your main weapon, if you have one, then two situational loadouts. As an example, I have my Ripper as my first slot, then a Tremor loadout for digging out entrenched enemies, and a Havoc one for tearing down filthy badger mains camping up in those high corners. As with most things in life, balance seems pretty smart, and I'd always suggest carrying a good variety of death sticks, something for any situation. And well, that leads nicely into... Number 3. Try everything. At time of writing, there are 19 primary weapons, 9 secondaries, and 13 ultimates. By my maths, that's a little over 2,200 different possible loadouts. Woohoo! When you first strap on your jetpack, though, you will only have access to a handful of these. Now, don't be too disheartened at your lack of creative murder tools, as the three starting weapons are among the most popular in tournaments, as they're good all-round weapons that are simple and straightforward to use. As you increase in rank and open shard packs, you will eventually earn blueprints for new and excitingly violent weaponry. New weapons are not better than earlier unlocks, they merely offer different playstyles. Common weapons are more versatile and a little bit more straightforward to use. The higher the rarity, the more situational the weapon will be. That is literally all rarity means. And I know I'm going to get people complain down in the comments about that. Shut up, I'm right, you're wrong. 
Isn't someone doing a whole series that explains exactly how each of the weapons work precisely in order to train aspiring new pilots? Hmm, I wonder who that might be. You might want to go check that out sometime. Now seriously though, this tip number three is about thinking. Try stuff, get a feel for what you enjoy, play with different weapons, and you'll find the ones that you like. Also, ranking up each weapon also earns bonus shards, helping you unlock new weapons faster. <laughs> Variety, it's the spice of life, so mix it up a little. Number four, know the maps. This is another seemingly obvious point, but it really bears mentioning and going into a bit of depth on. Firstly, it's vital that you know where the various pickups are. If you're a nutcase close range specialist like a Thunderstorm user, you're going to need to know where those shield and health pickups are, or you'll just be a nutcase close range corpse. You'll want to know where the invisibility and double damage power ups are, of course, so that you can stop the enemy team getting them and you can pick them up and go on a killing spree of your own. Beyond this, know the lay of the land. There are some bridges in Moon and Temple that can be fired through. Know the choke points in Magma and understand how grenades and tremor or venom shots will bounce through the corridors of Snowbase. Know the fastest retreat routes and how much fuel it takes to jet between certain platforms. This kind of information can save your ass from leaping towards a platform, only to run out of fuel and fall short into an early grave like a sad parody of a Wile E. Coyote cartoon. It's also vital to know which weapons work well on different maps. Sticky grenades and proximity mines are very hard to spot on magma. Ripper discs are hard to avoid in the tight corridors of Snowbase, and Canyon has wide open areas for long claw sniping or badger barrages. Know your map and how it affects your loadouts. Now on the subject of maps, rumour has it that there is a treasure chest that sometimes appears off the sides of Temple. Why not show the world how gullible you are by leaping off the map in search of it? Yeah, don't suicide off the sides of Temple, you absolute morons. Number 5. Socialize. Armorjet is a team game. There's four of you against four of them, and without good backup, you'll find that they're just going to smear you into a bloody paste. Use the social menu, add people you played with recently, and ask to play together. Use the in-game chat function to talk to players, ask to join them. Don't be a douchebag. It's considered common courtesy to let them know when you need to go, rather than just dropping group and leaving everyone going, huh? Come join the Armorjet Discord if you haven't already. You'll find clans that are hiring new pilots and groups looking to fill all four slots. Again, don't be a douchebag. Humans are notoriously emotional creatures, so treat your fellow meatbags with respect, you hear me? Play nicely. Your job is to murder the enemy team, not your own. As a team game, it's easy to blame your teammates when you lose, but this doesn't really help anyone. You can't change how your team plays, only how you play. Always look at your own performance and consider ways that you can improve too. If you only lose because of bad teammates, then it's only logical that you only win because you're being carried by good ones. Only douchebags blame their teammates. Don't be a douchebag, own your failures and you can own your victories. There are tons of community events and tournaments going on too. Drop in on some of the community's excellent streamers, watch and participate in tournaments. Consider creating content and streaming yourself. So there we have it, those are my top 5 tips to surviving in space. If you found this video at least a little bit helpful or entertaining, give me a big thumbs up, makes me feel happy, you know, fills that little hollow area inside of me. Smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell like your bloody Quasimodo. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, I am always open to feedback, especially the positive kind, so please don't be a douchebag. I'm also open to feedback of the financial kind, so if that sounds like your jam, head across to my Patreon. If you want more Armorjet content, I also run a series called Loadout Lowdown. You may have heard me mention it a couple of times subtly throughout the video as a little bit of marketing to direct you towards it. <laughs> I'm a genius, you see. That's a series that's examining every weapon in the game, and there's plenty more Armorjet content around here besides. Finally, if you're up for a chat, come find us all on the Gaming Galleon Discord to talk about Armorjet and so much more. Just don't be a douchebag. I'll ban you. Happy sailing, and see you in the arena.